Hi, my name is Punchankar and in this video, we would be looking at recommendation system using Python. This is part 2 of my video where we would be covering the practical aspect. For those of you who would like to understand the concepts can watch my part 1 video using the link in the below video description. The agenda of this video is as follows. First, we will have a brief look at what we discussed in our part 1 session. Next, we will understand the role of Python in data science. After which, we will have a brief introduction to the SPIDER IDE that we would be using in this video. Then, we will perform data extraction and preparation using Python. Then, we will generate association rule using a priori algorithm. Finally, we will have a brief look at the advantages and challenges of association rules. Let's do a recap of my part 1 session. In part 1 of this session, we first looked into the three major types of algorithms that is widely used in developing recommendation systems. We looked at association rules, collaborative filtering and matrix factorization algorithms with relevant examples. We then looked into the association rules in detail and took a real life example that would be used throughout this session. We then looked into the key metrics that is very important to understand for generating meaningful association rules. We looked at support, confidence and lift metrics with relevant examples and use cases. Finally, we portrayed a real-life scenario of how a transactional data could be used to generate an association rules and how those rules would make sense in a business scenario. Next, we will understand the role of Python in data science. Now, why Python? Python is a language of choice for many data scientists in today's world. Its popularity and use cases continuously improved and in 2016, it overtook our programming language in Kaggle, which is a premium data science community for competitions. Libraries for data science. The strength of Python is the variety of libraries it offers that makes data science related works easier to perform and understand. The three major libraries that is used for machine learning and data science activities are Pandas, NumPy, and Matplotlib. Rich Community Python has tremendously grown as a programming language in multiple streams and have established an active community that comes in handy for sharing and improving knowledge. There is ample amount of opportunities to learn the language and improve it by practicing with many projects. Increasing development. There are many developments that is happening in the Python ecosystem recently and data science experts have forecasted that their growth trend will continue in the future. We will now look into an overview of SPIDER IDE which we would be using to write Python code in this video. SPIDER is an excellent IDE that comes pre-installed with Anaconda package. For those of you who do not have Anaconda installed in your systems, you could do it by navigating to this link, downloading the software and installing it in your systems. Once that is done, you should be able to access Spider from your Anaconda prompt or through the Anaconda navigator. I am opening my Spider through my Anaconda prompt. Spider has a neat and simple UI. The space which you guys see here is for writing Python scripts. What you see here is the place you could be able to see the help documents, variable explorer, plots and files. The most important feature here is the variable explorer. While we start assigning variables in our code, we would be able to see this feature to easily see what is stored in those variables. What we see here is the Python console. This shows the result of our code execution and is extremely useful when you are debugging larger Python scripts. The debug option is out here which gives a lot of options to perform debugging. And finally, Spider also gives an easy way to set your working directory. 
what you see here is the working directory of my project and you should be able to change it by clicking the browse button here. Let's first start preparing the data to generate association rules out of it. The data that would be used in this video is a CSV data of a grocery store. Each line in the CSV represents a transaction. Let's first extract the data and clean it up for consumption. This is the code that would pre perform the data extraction part. First, I have initiated a list. Then, I am opening the file and reading each line. After reading the lines, I am using strip function to remove the white spaces from the beginning and the end of the line. Here, I am iterating through each line and splitting the items using split function. Then, I am appending it into the list. Once we execute this and when we open the final variable in the variable explorer tab, the final output would be like this, where each transaction will contain a list of items in the transaction. Now, we will have to encode the data in the list to make it ready to be fed into our algorithm to generate association rules. Encoding is nothing but representing the items present in the list in the form of zeros and ones. This is also widely called as the one-hot encoding in machine learning world. This is much clearer when you look at the end result. This is the set of script that we would be using for encoding our data. I would be using the ML extent library in Python and transaction encoder function within that to perform this activity. Python has a lot of libraries like this that does the data preparation related to data science work easier. First, I have initiated one hot transactions and then the data is transformed into one hot encoding format. And finally, it is converted into a data frame. Now, after running the script, if we open the data frame, we would be able to see that the unique items are represented in the columns and its presence in a transaction is denoted by true or false, which is basically 1 or 0. Now, our data is cleaned and available in a format that is required to be fit into an algorithm. Let's now start generating the association rules using a priori algorithm. This is the set of code that would be used to generate association rules. First, I am importing a priori and association rules function from ML extent library. Next, I will be using a data frame in a priori function along with the minimum support of 0.02, which means the item set is available in at least 2% of all transactions. I have covered the concept of support and other few key metrics which would play a vital role in generating association rules in my part 1 video. To those who want to get more idea on it, please refer my part 1 video link that is provided in video description. Then we would be generating association rules based on a lift value greater than 1. Again, the reason we use this metric and choose a threshold value of 1 from a conceptual point of view is explained in my previous video. Now that we have generated our association rules, let's look at the top 10 association rules sorted by the confidence metric. Let's run this and when we open the top 10 variable from the variable explorer, we would be able to see the top 10 rules that could be used for business decisions. As a quick example, we can infer that the probability that a customer buys whole milk given he or she has bought other vegetables and yogurt is 0.51. Now, these rules can be used to develop strategies like combo offers, keeping the items together in supermarket, etc. While the purpose of this video is to explain the practical aspect of association rule generation, to those of you who haven't seen my part 1 video on the concepts, 
I would recommend to see that video as well since both the contents in these videos complement each other. Finally, we will quickly see the advantages and challenges in association rules. Some major advantages of association rules are that it is easy to interpret and that it is one of the main reasons why it is majorly preferred by business stakeholders. Also, the transactional data that is required to compute association rules would be mostly available in organizations for analysis. Some major challenges of association rules are that the computational power requirement could be extremely high if the number of unique items are high. And another important constraint is that in association rules, a customer's preference or like-dislike is not considered. It generates rules based on the combination of items, but then there may be a scenario where a customer has bought two items and disliked one. In that case, how could we differentiate it? To address this challenge is when collaborative filtering type of algorithm is used and where it considered both the items a customer buys and what they like. I would be shortly developing a video on the collaborative filtering concepts and methodologies as well. Please watch out for my next video on this. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Stay connected by subscribing my channel to dive into more details and learn more together. Please give a thumbs up and share if you have liked this video. Also, please comment below for any questions in this video and I will do my best to help you guys out.